Okay, welcome to you all at the ITS Capstone Expo Semester 2 2021, which is happening fully virtually for the first and hopefully for the last time, <laughs> finger crossed. Thanks for joining. Uh, I'm Amit Ibran, the convener for Capstone Project Units. Uh, before we start, I would like to acknowledge the Nanawal people who are the traditional custodians of this land and pay respect to elders of the past and present. I also extend this respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in attendance today. Uh, just a few housekeeping, uh, please ensure um, if your microphone is muted throughout the event. You are more than welcome to turn your video on. You can also use the chat to pass on the messages or use the live reactions. Uh, just to let you know that the program is being recorded uh, if in case anyone have any concern. Uh, if there is any serious technical disruption on Network Jam, uh, we will post a recorded uh, program on the website later. Now I would like to invite our Executive Dean, Professor Jenin Dickin, to deliver her welcome note. Over to Jenin. Thanks, Ahmed. So, um, good morning, everyone. I'm, as Ahmed said, I'm Professor Jenin Deakin. I'm the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Science and Technology here at the University of Canberra. And it's a great pleasure to welcome you all virtually here today for the Semester 2 2021 Capstone Project Expo. It's a shame that we can't be doing this face to face, but um, we make the most of the, the times we're in. So this event provides an excellent opportunity for students to not only showcase their hard work through innovation, but provides a space to enable students to connect and network with you, our project sponsors, industry guests and academic staff. It has been an incredibly challenging semester with the lockdown for our students, but they've adapted incredibly well and have managed to do some amazing things in these capstone projects. So if you haven't had a chance to look at our top 10 teams um, via the faculty's website, um, there is a, the link in the chat. So please make sure you do um, have a look at those. Thank you to all those who have provided projects for our students this semester. Thank you to Careers UC for helping us connect with industry. And thank you to those attending who are interested in celebrating the achievements of our students. I'd also like to acknowledge um, the work that Dr. Ahmed Imran has put into this event, and I'll now pass over to him, um, who will give a brief overview of the capstone units and the highlights of the semester. Thanks, Janine. Uh, before we proceed to award announcement, uh, for the interest of our industry guests, uh, I would like to give a quick overview of our Capstone project first. Uh, Capstone projects are an important uh, prov and probably the last milestone of students' academic programs uh, where uh, they get an opportunity to apply and showcase their talents and various skills they have acquired throughout the program for the last few years while at UC. Uh, in addition, students are exposed to complex real life problems, which they solve in a group uh, in a real life setting using their technical, innovative and project management skill under the guidance of an academic supervisor and teaching team. Uh, the assessments are designed to cover various dimensions and aspects of uh, Engineers Australia and the Australian Computer Society's accreditation requirements. Over the years, uh, Capstone projects achieved uh, significant success both in quality and industry engagements. Uh, this year, the COVID-19 pandemic posed a critical challenge for the Capstone projects, particularly for industry engagement and uh, in implementing some lab-based works. Uh, however, uh, most of the students were able to overcome these challenges and adopted alternative and innovative approaches towards a viable project outcome. So uh, as 
Janine mentioned that uh, industry sponsors are an important part of this program where they provide uh, valuable time and insight by offering suitable and interesting projects for the students. Uh, this surely a uh, win-win venture for both the students and sponsors, and the value derived from this experience is invaluable. Uh, from this year, we also introduced a new IP agreement between university and industries so that industries feel more comfortable to put their effort and make use of the developed product for their own benefit. So now let's look at some of the stats for this year. Uh, in this semester, we had 270 students in capstone units, including undergrad and postgrad. These students formed into 68 groups, 39 were undergrad and 29 were postgrad. 59 projects were offered, out of which 22 were industry sponsored uh, and the rest of the were UC sponsored project. Uh, the number is not too bad given the COVID situation when many industries uh, refrained from offering project at this time. Uh, industry sponsors include, as you see from the list, uh, both private and public service organizations at federal and state level. OK, now a uh, few words uh, about the uh, award process, the selection process for award winners. Uh, since uh, we couldn't hold a face to face even this time, and we followed a three step process uh, for selecting the award winner. In step one, uh, 10 finalists were shortlisted based on their 15 minutes virtual presentation and marks obtained by a panel of three independent judges. If a panel member has any involvement with any project or supervisor or sponsor, he or she refrained from marking to avoid conflict of interest. All these finalists were then asked to submit a three minute video for the expo. Uh, I need to mention that the students got only a week or more reaction time to produce and submit a video. Hence, it, it may not reflect their actual performance based on which they were shortlisted. However, it was extremely tight competition with difference between first and the 10th was uh, less than two marks. So in the next step, um, first three from the top 10 were selected for the nominees by the panel. And finally, the best word award uh, was selected out of three by the choice of senior panel who will receive trophies and certificates individually signed by uh, our executive dean. So these are the judges in stage one, Tony Kwan, Safia, Dr. Safia Aukai, Majid Al Subai, Shifali Segal, Walter Slevkumar, and of, often I also fill the gap if there is any shortage. And our next panel, next stage in the stage three panel involved the senior panel, uh, Professor Jenny Kin and Professor Dean Gleason, uh, Sir Professor Tamsin Kelly, and Dr. Braden McGrath. Thank you for your time within a short notice uh, to render your uh, uh, expertise in selecting our awardees. Okay. Here are some glimpses from the past events. Um, yes, we can't uh, hold that photo events and opportunities, but uh, we look forward to some other occasions in future. So this is uh, just a glimpse of the um, the award you will be receiving. So don't worry, those who will be awarded, everyone will be able to collect it, and uh, Libby will send the necessary instructions accordingly. All right, <clears throat> now we uh, move on to the most exciting part of today's event for which uh, all of you are eagerly waiting. Uh, this is indeed the moment of truth for students uh, who could make it to the finalist list to celebrate after the hard work they put in throughout the semester. 
So the best presentation award. Uh, we have three nominations. Out of uh, 10 finalists. So uh, let me tell you about the criteria for best presentation. It was based on the uh, level of clarity and coherence, um, seamless flow of information, uh, innovative, creative and captivating or Im impressive approach. And finally, the demonstration of your teamwork and engagement. So the nominees are. Ahmed, we might need to go back to the start of that video and you might need to turn it up just a little bit as we're just having some um, issues of not being able to hear it in the background. Thank you. Uh, it may be I'll have to share it again, stop and try again. OK, sorry for the disruptions as expected. Math Immersion by Group 978. Math Immersion by Group 9785-04. Is it working? Math Immersion by Group 9785-04. Let me take you back to primary school, where you were sitting in the back row of your math classroom. The teacher is explaining something about multiplication, or is it division? But you're more interested in whatever you can come up with in your own imagination. Does this sound familiar? Because the reality for 40% of students who are currently disengaging at school and 53% who are uninterested in learning mathematics. Our project, Math Immersion, was founded on these statistics and we to combat the current student disengagement and unproductivity in the math classroom. Jurassic World of Math is a Unity educational application designed and developed by our project team with each component specifically designed to help us reach our goals. So buckle up and get ready to be taken on the invention that is Jurassic World of Math. Oh my God, oh my God. Is this really happening? I seem to be in a world of 3D math dinosaurs. This is crazy. How, I, how am I going to get out of here? Oh, let's click this play button and see what's going on. Oh, okay, so it seems to be about math. Okay, so I've got addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Oh, I don't really... I don't really know where to start. Oh, there's a dinosaur staring at me, a T-Rex. That's crazy. Oh, I know addition. I could tr try that. Oh, there's so much going on. I don't know where to start. Oh, there's a, there's a cool hint button I can click. Oh, okay. So I have to click the right answer egg. I have to get five right to be to win the game. I have to five, get five wrong to lose. Okay, I think I can do this. Okay, six plus two. I know that. That's easy. That's eight. Oh, two plus one. Okay, that's that's three. Oh, 9 plus 7, I'm not sure about that. 4? Oh, that's not right. 5? Oh, it could be 16. Oh, okay, 5 plus 5, I'm not sure about that one. Is it 4? Oh, could it be 1? Oh, uh, I'm about to lose. Oh, it's a 10. Oh, this is exciting. Uh, uh, is it 9? 
Oh, I lost a game. All right, guys. I'll, I'll see you guys next time after I've had some more practice. Mathemo. Next. Hello, everyone. Our names are John, Adam, Robin, and Bathia. We are here to discuss our project, mimicking IT infrastructure using Raspberry Pi 400 Part 2, Cyber Attacks and Defense. Last semester, our team built our Java IT infrastructure, comprised of operable servers running on two Raspberry Pi 400s connected by a Cisco switch. This infrastructure mimicked that of a real business IT infrastructure with services such as a web server, Windows Active Directory, and network allocated storage. However, this infrastructure had the advantage that it could be created at a fraction of the cost due to the use of the portable and lower cost Raspberry Pi 400 computers. The process of creating this infrastructure was documented and will be used as a guide for future students in classes taught by the project sponsor, Dr. Wan Lima. This semester, Wan Li tasked us to use the Java infrastructure as a sandbox to implement and test four security systems, these being penetration testing frameworks, vulnerability scanners, firewalls, and finally, intrusion detection systems. For penetration testing, we utilize Metasploit, which is a framework containing numerous modules that are used to exploit vulnerabilities in a target system. The target system being the Metasploitable VM. An intentionally vulnerable Linux machine designed as a target system for beginner penetration testers as a learning environment. After testing and learning against the Metasploitable VM, we use this knowledge to target the Java infrastructure in an attempt to exploit any potential vulnerabilities in the network. For vulnerability scanners, we utilize both the Nessus and OpenVAS programs. These tools run scans to find weaknesses in a target network and provides a report of any vulnerabilities detected, which are categorized by level of risk. We use both these scanners against both the Java infrastructure and the Metasploitable VM and compare the results of each scanner. For firewalls, we utilize the program UFW for host firewall rules, which protect a single host, which is another term for a computer. And for network firewall rules, which protect the entire network, we utilize the router software OpenWRT, which has options to implement firewall rule sets. For both of these tools, we experimented with different firewall configurations to determine an optimal firewall setup to provide security without compromising access to any of the network resources. Finally, for intrusion detection systems, we utilized the program Snort. Snort was used to implement both community provider rule sets and a custom made rule set, which create alerts when traffic is detected that match one of the included rules. This allows for monitoring of any suspicious or unwanted traffic in your network. Now, in conclusion, all of the investigated security systems were successfully implemented onto the job network infrastructure. After implementing each security system, the process was documented as a guide for future students and classes taught by our project sponsor, Dr. Wan Lee Ma. The low-cost nature of the Raspberry Pi 400 paired with the detailed implementation guide created by the group will enable any individual to learn cybersecurity without requiring access to expensive and bulky network infrastructure. I would like to also extend a special thanks to the teaching staff of the IT Capstone Project Unit and to Wan Lee Ma, and I will back at Yola for their guidance. Hello everyone, our names are John. Move on to the next, the last presentation, nominees.
you. Now, the winner. Now, I would like to uh, hand over this uh, privilege to one of our very hardworking uh, sessional, one of the panelists, uh, Walter, if you could announce the winner. Okay, thank you, Ahmed. Yes, uh, it is indeed time to announce the winner of the best presentation award. Um, and as we just saw, all three presentations were really good, uh, but uh, there can only be one winner, and that is team 100405, the last presentation that we watched uh, with the team members consisting of Parimala, Mitch, and Nandana. Uh, that was a great presentation, so congratulations to the team. You've done an excellent job. Uh, I think we're going to watch their presentation just one more time. It is the one. Go to you, Ahmed. Thank you. Do not Now we move on to the best poster award. Uh, for best poster award, I would like to invite Tony Khan to uh, announce the nominees and the winners. Caitlin is going to help Tony. Thank you, uh, Ahmed, and uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I have uh, the uh, honor and the privilege to uh, announce the top three nominees of the best poster award. Um, we have um, presented uh, the students a difficult challenge. Um, we asked them to um, basically using an A0 size poster uh, and tell the entire story of the project, uh, what happened in the 13 weeks. And I must say that um, the results are very, very impressive. Um, and um, uh, most teams have submitted a, a very uh, a high quality poster. Um, uh, they're innovative, you know, they uh, uh, capture a lot of content um, and um, they tell the story very, very well. Um, and uh, it presented the, the panel a, a difficult time uh, to um, uh, shortlist to 10 finalists and then eventually to the top three nominees. And uh, I, I will be announcing the top three nominees now. And uh, Caitlin would, uh, as I announced the, uh, the nominee, then Caitlin would give a, a background, a bit of the background of the project. Uh, so the first, um, the first nominee, uh, it's um, unit 9785, uh, project team number four. And it's uh, the design behavior research to evaluate virtual reality and mixed reality learning environment. And the team members are Emily, Timothy, and Jules. Yeah. Over to you, Caitlin. Yeah. Thanks, Tony. Our project, Math Immersion, was centered around creating the Unity Educational Application Jurassic World of Maths, built around the fundamental mathematical functions, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Research found that 40% of students are disengaging at school, and 53% are uninterested in mathematics. From this foundation, the application was developed, including a home screen, operation screen, arithmetic functions, tally system, back button, help button, and animated dinosaurs. The evaluators found the application immersive, innovative, interactive, and visually engaging, helping combat the current student disengagement and unproductivity. The findings show that the application is ready for target audience testing before it can make, start making a difference. Thank you, uh, Kaden. The second um, nominee, uh, it belongs to team 19 of unit 9785, uh, Robo recognition evaluation of image recognition of a mobile robot system. And the team members are Wetheran, Kurt, Mitchell, and Riley. Thanks, Tony. Project Artemis's aim is to contribute to the development of wearable fall detection technology. 
Falls represent a serious risk to elderly people, which can be mitigated through the use of such technology and fall detection algorithms. In developing such an algorithm, the primary need is to differentiate between falls and daily activities. Project Artemis uses neural decision tree thought, the Karasis, uh, Karas Deep Learning API to identify falls within the simulated data set to 100% training and validation accuracy. Further testing indicated that problematic and over-simulated data sets are a significant issue in the development of accurate fall detection software. This poster outlines the background, methodology, materials, and results of Project Artemis, as well as a recommendation. Thank you, Kaylin. Uh, and the uh, third nominee uh, belongs to Team 5 of 1004 and 5, the engineering unit. And the project is exploration of the use of off-the-shelf wearable device to monitor force and gate using open source SDK. And the team members are uh, Harimara, Mitch, Mandana, and Methuro. Thanks, Tony. Throughout the last century, the amount of elderly living alone with minimal support from family members and carers is ever growing. The possibility of falling while alone is causing an increased concern and fear among the elderly and their loved ones. The research has explored the use of wearable devices to prevent and detect falls, as well as monitor an individual's gait, which is a person's manner of walking. We have successfully identified factors causing a fall, applied a feature extraction on gait metrics, and applied machine learning algorithms on public fall detection data sets to detect falls. We aim to bring back independence and help the elderly live free from injuries caused by falls that may impede their everyday life. Thank you, Kaylin. Uh, now, I'm going to announce the winner, but be before I do that, uh, I do uh, like to encourage uh, all of you, if you have time, to have a look at the top 10 finalists of the poster. They are all posted uh, on the website, uh, and you will see that there's a lot of uh, quality material there. So without further ado, the winner of the best poster uh, also goes to Team 5 of 1004 and 5, Inspiration of, of the ship. To you, Amit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Tony. And we move on to the, the very last one. And for this demonstration uh, award, I would like to invite Dr. Safi Aukai, one of the uh, judges, uh, to announce the nominees and the winner. Thank you, Ahmed. Um, the nominees for the for the demonstration team are um, group group 31 of the 9785 team who worked on the digital toolkit. The project was given the toolkit product demonstration. We are group 31 and we were sponsored by the Department of Health to solve a complex problem. In short, the Department of Health did not have a centralized area that informed design executions across their products. If a customer wants advice on how to build a web service from platforms through to content, there is currently no single source of information that they can be pointed to. To solve this problem, we created a platform agnostic web service that is consistent in advice and can provide a centralized resource of usable standards, components, patterns, guides, and templates to prevent the duplication and fragmentation of information. We call it a digital toolkit. Here in the center of the screen, you can see the completed product we created to solve this problem. So how does it work? Say you are an editor working with the Department of Health. You require guidance around the department's best practices for displaying images on a Health Align website. To find this information, first navigate to the Design and Style Guidance card. Then select Publication and Image Requirements. This card provides specific rules and standards around publications and how images are expressed. Then, navigate to the Images and Technical Requirements section. Here, you can find all of the information you need in relation to your image, formatting and compliance questions. To the next. The next group is group 10 from the 11522 stream who worked on the automated mail recording system. Uh, 
think uh, sequence is a bit. Uh... Welcome to the. Sorry, the sequence is. Welcome to the Capstone Project Management System. Our website aims to streamline the administrative processes associated with the University of Canberra's ICT Capstone projects and provide a way for student projects to be archived and shared. The Capstone units to run, sponsors first submit proposals for projects they want completed by students. Once proposals are approved by the teaching team, student groups can then nominate their preferred projects and each group is allocated a project to complete. Let's take a look at how this process works. Each logged in user has a central dashboard. They're hub for all important information and functions. This dashboard is personalized based on the user's roles and what they need to do at that point in time. This user is a sponsor who wants to submit a project proposal to be completed in the upcoming semester. In contrast to the current processes based entirely on unwieldy volumes of email communication, our system digitizes all form submissions. This simplifies the process for everyone involved and form standardization also makes the content easier to understand and manage. For example, when we received our list of possible projects, some of the proposals were unhelpfully short, while others were impractically long. Enforcing standardized formats helps mitigate these issues. Once this form is submitted, the unit convener can review all pending proposals, and once a proposal is approved, it automatically becomes visible to students. In contrast to the existing approach, where staff must manually compile and format the list of approved projects for students to view, in our system, it will be done instantly. Now returning back to the dashboard, you can see that all of the sponsor's actions are centered around managing their proposals and projects. In contrast, the unit convener's dashboard links to their role-specific functions, such as managing users, editing course settings, approving or rejecting proposals, and keeping track of which students still need to join groups. The dashboard is dynamic and it reacts to the state of the system and user. For example, the quick action uh, task sponsor proposals is only visible when there are proposals pending review. One of the first things a unit convener would need to do is to add more users to the system. They can add individual staff or sponsors, or they can import a spreadsheet from the allocate enrollment software to efficiently manage large numbers of students. Once added, these new users will automatically receive an email with their login details. Finally, let's go back to the uh, student dashboard and take a look at what the students can do in the system. At the start of the semester, important functions for students include viewing available projects and submitting their project preferences. However, after they've been allocated to a project, these functions are no longer relevant. The dashboard adapts to easily give access to their project details. In the current system, allocating students to projects is a labor intensive process for the teaching team as they need to manually compile this information into spreadsheets. Once projects are completed, students can upload videos, images, and text descriptions for their projects. This gets stored into a publicly searchable archive of past projects, and these highly successful projects will be highlighted in an online Capstone Expo showcase. This project has been an exciting opportunity to develop a system with real world practical benefits, and we look forward to seeing what students and the university can do with it in the future. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry for the glitch in the sequence. So now we'll see the automated mail recording system by group 10. hospital is dealing with hundreds of meals to be delivered to their patients on a daily basis, with strict nutrition and dietary standards. Despite this colossal food responsibility, the whole process is still labor-intensive and manually conducted. There are approximately 700 plus meals a day, which takes 45 minutes to one hour before serving. It requires a person at the end of the tray line to manually check and verify the meal items which takes 10 to 15 seconds. On average a tray comes in every 30 seconds and sometimes a little quicker, but, occasionally, mistakes are made. 
Our project aims to solve this problem by increasing meal compliance and standardizing quality assurance. Automated meal recording system's mission is serve the right meal to the right patient every time. Our solution is AMRS. To use the system, first, execute the meal tray recognition program in Raspberry Pi. Provide the meal tray to be recognized. The extracted features will be used to detect the meal tray. Next, execute the computer vision program in Raspberry Pi. On another machine, execute the back-end, front-end, and database service using Docker Compose. AMRS system is now up and running. The configuration page holds configuration-related data. The report page displays the list and summary of recorded meal trays. The dashboard page displays the video feed and captured photos. Placing a meal tray that is not recognizable will not trigger the detection mechanism. On the other hand, a recognizable meal tray will trigger the detection mechanism, and after 5 seconds, photo will be taken, and data will be recorded. The recorded data is immediately visible on the report page. AMRS is cost and time efficient, minimizes human error, and offers a better auditing process. The future direction is as follows. Implement OCR to extract information from the small piece of paper attached to the meal tray that contains the meal and patient information. Implement a serving robot to substitute a person that manually delivers the meal. Improve and extend the computer vision functionality to recognize the meal tray content, giving it the ability to detect contaminants like bugs, a strand of hair, and more. Lastly, integrate with Parenting Project's automated meal compliance. We are Team 11522-10, and thanks for watching. Welcome. Okay, um, so as you would have seen from the presentation, this was a really tough call to decide which of the three teams will be the winner. And as a result, um, we got for two groups, we got um, two votes each from the panel. So it was a tie and we couldn't just go, this is the winner over this person. So for this group, we've got two teams that emerged as winners. And the two teams are the automated meal recording system we've just seen and the UC Capstone project. A very hearty congratulations to the winners. And Thank you very much, Sophia. OK, congratulations to all the finalists. Uh, and uh, congratulations uh, to all the people involved uh, behind the screen and uh, also the judges. So uh, I think uh, we have some time uh, to uh, hear a few words from our industry sponsors. So they are a uh, very critical part of the whole journey. So uh, this is an opportunity. We couldn't actually mingle face to face, but um, virtually we could take some of their uh, comments if they wish. And, and I think uh, we have uh, received a few indicated to speak few words uh, uh, in they mentioned in their RSVP. John Miller, if you are here, I will stop share the sharing now so that people can see everyone and allow everyone to see each other. OK. Uh, so. Brigitte Aken, Bri, are you here? Yeah. Hi, I'm here. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say the Capstone project 
has been amazing. Like, so I had a, um, a very passionate idea about helping uh, community and Capstone Project has allowed me to connect with an amazing team who are full of passion for the same thing. Um, and they developed an app for me to go out into community. So we, we've got the, the front end of the back end um, pretty much done and it's a massive project. So um, the students have now requested that they continue to work with me and I'm, I'm welcoming them on board. Uh, and I've got interest now also from um, PCYC. Um, I'm working on joining the app with Fair Canberra and I've got some Indigenous interest in it as well. So um, that I couldn't have done any of that without the awesome team that worked on the project with me to bring this idea to reality. Thanks. Thank you, Brie. Uh, is there anyone who's like to speak? Uh, Nick Manikis. Thank you, Ahmed. Um, so I'm just trying to get on here. Um, Okay. Yes, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, I worked with uh, three teams, um, capstone teams, to look at the uh, Royal Commission recommendations on uh, aged care. Um, and there were 147 of those recommendations. Uh, as you can appreciate, aged care has become a, quite an issue uh, over the last couple of years. and. Um, particularly the quality of care, uh, quality of care and other issues. And that's been particularly highlighted during the, uh, the COVID. Um, the focus for the three teams that um, uh, I worked with was to look at specific recommendations around uh, assistive technology and home uh, modifications. Uh, there was a recommendation that the Royal Commission had made that, that uh, we needed to look at uh, further ways of keeping people in their homes instead of chuffing them off to uh, institutions. And a lot of people want to stay in their homes and technology, um, the Royal Commission recognised that technology would um, uh, plays a large part in that uh, to assist. Now, the three teams uh, did a lot of work. I was very impressed with uh, the work that they did and, and, and the one that's been listed in particular um, have looked at what sort of a, uh, technology exists around the world uh, through their reviews, literature reviews, and um, and they've come up with some pretty innovative um, ideas, um, which are very impressive and very interesting reading. And I just end by congratulating those teams and um, I look forward to catching up with them again uh, to maybe take some of their ideas um, further, particularly uh, since the federal government uh, has an appetite for the application of technology, as you probably saw in the context of climate change. They've put $100 million towards, um, you know, furthering climate change through the use of technology. I think, um, and I might be shot down by people, but I think uh, aged care, and I, that might be a bit of self-interest as well, but aged care certainly deserves that sort of focus and uh, resourcing uh, in getting technology um, uh, you know, innovative ways to keep people in their homes as they uh, age. So with that, congratulations, the team. Thank you, Ahmed, for the opportunity and the University of Canberra to, uh, to um, have a look at a uh, different way of applying some of these recommendations. Thanks, Nick. It's very encouraging that IT students are going beyond their boundary and uh, making societal impact on and, and addressing some of these critical social issues as well. So, uh, John, I can see John's hand. Uh, you can take the mic and speak. John Miller. Maybe your microphone is mute. Is there any other hands? Anyone would like to share something instantly? 
you're most welcome. We have a few minutes more or you know, almost 10 minutes in hand. We expected to finish early, uh, but uh, anyway, if if there is uh, no further comments, uh, then we will uh, call it a day. And uh, at this stage, I will pass on to our head of school, um, Professor Kumudu Munasinghe, uh, to close down the event. Over to Kumudu. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so this, um, I've been here for you know, almost nine years. The project keeps getting better and better and better. Um, even now with COVID, you know, within, you know, within the four sides of the screen, it's it's even bloody fantastic. <laughs> Pardon my language. <laughs> uh, so um, a big congratulations to all. So congratulations to all the students um, who were selected to showcase their projects for the Capstone Expo. Um, and I think, you know, you should be very proud of what you've accomplished throughout the semester and throughout your learning period. Uh, we we understand that capstone projects uh, are you and units are very integral part of our um, learning here at UC, and and it's it's great to see you know how you have learned and achieved so much uh, your skills, uh, especially integrating with the industry and so on. So big congratulations to all the winners uh, for the best presentation, best poster, best demonstration. Uh, I think there was a tie somewhere as well. So you can see how good these things are becoming and how difficult it is for the judges to actually make um, their judgmental calls. So thank you. A big thank you for all the project supervisors who provided projects to our students for the semester. Um, without your support, uh, the capstone project will not be a capstone project. So a big thank you for all. Uh, I would like to um, mention those names, ACT Revenue Office, um, Australian Government Department of Health, Catholic Education, Deloitte, Diversity Areas, Fair Canberra Inc., uh, GoTerra, uh, Hope Holistic Care, Hyperscalers, Miller Health Private Limited, Procurement ACT Treasury and Economic Development, PwC, uh, and um, my personal special thanks to ACES for engaging with us um, and apologies in case of uh, Albatross Gov. Yep. Uh, and uh, my apologies in case I've missed anything, but a very big thank you. Um, thank you to all our project supervisors within the school, faculty and the university, to all our staff and also to our sessionals, because sessionals also played a great role with the projects and the and the uh, marking and, and assisting um, uh, Ahmed uh, in, in, in various activities. Um, special thanks to Tony um, for for helping us in this year again. Um, and um, thank you very much to Ahmed for coordinating the this mammoth task yet again. Um, this is the school's uh, biggest expo, uh, biggest event of the year or of the semester that we run. And thank you, Ahmed, again for a very successful year for us, overall a successful year uh, with our IT capstone projects. And last but not least, uh, a big thanks to Libby and Caitlin for helping us with um, the capstone projects, organizing anything, you know, you guys are our first contact points and, you know, you never let us down, you know. So a big thank you to both of you. Um, and I need to shout both of you a coffee. Uh, yes. So finally, thank you to everyone for attending our virtual capstone project expo this semester and showing your support to the students. I hope you have a wonderful summer with your family and friends. Take care, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Have a good, happy new year. You too, Ahmed. See you later. Bye-bye.